Hi, Paige Hudson here, and I just wanted to take you through the logic stage guide you've just received. We'll be looking at the biology for the logic stage teacher's guide and student guide, but if you've ordered earth science and astronomy, chemistry, or physics, they'll be set up in the same manner as this guide. So let's take a look. The first thing you'll see when you scroll through your teacher's guide is the copywriting page, and this allows you to print within your own immediate family. If you're planning on using this for either a co-op or school, please contact us at supportedelementalscience.com and we'll work on setting up a co-op license for you. Next thing you'll see is the table of contents. If you have an ebook, all of these links will be clickable, so you can click on this week and it'll pull up the exact assignment you want for that. So if you have a printed guide, you'll know the page numbers you have to flip towards. So you'll be able to see right away the introduction and all the things, the different units you'll be studying. You can swap around the units. So for instance, if you would like to do plants first, you can go ahead and start with that unit. The units are independent, so you can move them between, but we say don't move the weeks within the unit. So you can swap around the units, but not the weeks within those units. And then we'll end with a year-end review in the appendix. So the first thing you'll see in the introduction is a little bit of an explanation of the philosophy behind this program. So during the middle school years, our students are building upon those facts that we taught them during the grammar stage years, and we're teaching them to kind of organize and begin to think analytically about the facts of science. So to do that, we are using hands-on inquiry. So these are your experiments. We're doing information, so they're learning from somewhere. They still need to be learning some facts, and they'll be doing some writing. And these writings will move from the simple narrations that we did during the grammar stage. So they'll be going from narrations to lists of facts to outlines and then writing a summary. So these will be more organized than they were during the grammar stage years. If you wanna learn a little bit more about writing and science, I recommend listening to the Tips for Homeschool Science Show episode 13, and we go a little bit more about how writing changes through the middle school and high school years. And then the other things we include um, are some extra activities, videos, things like that, and then quizzes and tests. So we give them tests during the middle school years. It's not absolutely necessary to give those tests. Uh, but they are a good way of gauging what your student is remembering and a good way of preparing them for the high school years where they will be taking tests for grades and stuff like that. So that's kind of the a quick and dirty look at the different components. In a nutshell, you're going to have uh, weekly student assignment sheets. You're going to have all the sketches pre-labeled. You're going to have discussion questions. Basically, the teacher's guide in a nutshell is your go-to guide to take your students through this program. And then the student guide, which is offered separately, this will be your student's go-to guide. So you've got your copyright policy in the student guide, same table of contents. If it's an ebook, those are clickable. And then you have an opening letter to the student, so they have an introduction to read as well. And basically, the, both the introductions at this point will begin to go through what the student assignment sheets are. So the student assignment sheets, each week you're going to have an experiment. It's going to give your student a little background about the scientific method in the teacher's guide. The background for the scientific method is in the appendix for you if you want that. And then on your student assignment sheets, you'll have vocabulary memory work, you'll have sketches, you'll have written assignments. So in your teacher's guide, it will give you a little more detail about what the students can do, the options for you, and then it'll talk about the dates. So that'll be the breakdown of the student assignment sheet. Here's what it looks like in the student guide. Not as quite as much information as in the teacher's guide, but still a good explanation of what they'll be looking at each week. Then again, we're trying to move our students towards independence. So in the student guide, we're going to give them a typical schedule of how they can break down the different assignments for the week. And then we're going to give them the resource page, just like we had for the grammar stage guides. You're going to have a resource page for this program. And then after that, they will have blank date sheets. In the teacher's guide, you're going to have a little bit more detail about the schedules and how those are broken up and then the additional information. So this is explanation of the heart and soul of your teacher's guide of what you need for your students. So you're gonna have experiment information, you're gonna have ideas to take it further if you want, the explanations for you to walk your students through, you're gonna have discussion questions, 
These are written with the idea that you haven't read the material, so you can still lead the discussion time without having read what your students are assigned that week. Uh, want more activities? If you want to add more, there's options in that section. Again, for biology for the logic stage, we have a couple of uh, dissection kit options that you could order if you are into dissections. And then each week you'll have the labeled sketch. So a little bit more information about tests, and then we're going to walk you through what a typical two-day-a-week schedule looks like, complete with sample outlines and narrative summaries, so you can kind of get an idea of what your student could do. And then we'll walk you through the same thing with a five-day-a-week schedule. So these are really helpful for you to get a picture of what your week will look like. So you want to look over those in the teacher's guide. And then we talk a little bit more about the science fair project and how to include your younger students. So our logic stage programs do not directly coincide with our grammar stage programs. That means week for week, you won't be studying the same topics. And this is because your logic stage student needs to dig quite a bit deeper into the topics than your grammar stage student does. So we include options in each of the teacher's guides for how you could switch the units around so that they'll more or less be on the same topic. So in biology for the grammar stage, they're studying animals for 20 weeks, then human body for 10 weeks, and then plants for the final six. In biology for the logic stage, it's going to be a little different. So basically, you're going to swap around these units that are talking about the biological building blocks, talking about invertebrates, invertebrates, so a little bit of the animal units, and then you'll look at the human body units, and then the plant unit. So that's how you can swap things around. You won't be on the exact same topics, but you'll be in the general area of animals, human body, and plants. If you have, uh, this is great if your students are kindergarten through second grade. If your younger students are third or fourth grade, uh, you could potentially have them work alongside in biology for the logic stage, but you could potentially have them work alongside your older student in biology for the logic stage, but here's some ideas of how to scale it back. So you'll have them watch and observe the experiments, but not necessarily make hypotheses. You'll have, um, you can add in some extra library books, or you can use the chart that coordinates resources that are more appropriate for younger students, and that's in the appendix of the teacher's guide. For your younger student, you will read to them and have them narrate back to you. And then you can let them just color the sketches and tell you how to label them, rather than having them label those. And then in the, the next part of the introduction, we'll show you some helpful articles. These articles will help you see a little bit more of the philosophy, again, behind this program. So what classical science for the logic stage needs to include, uh, demonstrations and experiments, what's the difference between those. And then if it's been a while since you've dealt with the scientific method, you can check out this post for a simple explanation of that. And then you do not want to miss this. You want to bookmark this for later. Uh, this is the resource page for biology for the logic stage. Anytime there's a link that was suggested in this guide, it is there on this page. Plus, you can download some other resources to go along with this program. So you definitely want to bookmark that for later. Again, if you have any questions about this program, uh, you can email us at support at elementalscience.com. We'll be happy to answer them as soon as we are able. So after we kind of explain the components of the program, we're going to look at our book list. These two encyclopedias are required for the program. So you need to have the Usborne Science Encyclopedia and the Kingfisher Science Encyclopedia. We've bookmarked the most current editions. Typically, though, the past two editions of the Spines will also work with the program. So if you find an older edition for a better price, you're welcome to go ahead and purchase that. And then these reference reports, these are great to have on hand if your student wants to dig a little deeper, but they are not necessarily required for the program. So you have to have these two encyclopedias. These are optional if your student wants to dig deeper. And then some experiment equipment. If you want to start to create a more of a lab setting or a lab feel for your students, you can purchase things like beakers and Erlenmeyer flasks for them to use. And here's a substitution for those. And safety advisory. Some of these experiments do use boiling water and open flames. So we recommend that students use safety glasses or protective gear with each experiment to prevent accidents. Do not allow students to perform any experiments marked with caution on their own. 
So next thing you'll see in biology for the logic stage, you'll have this microscope information sheet. We'll help you choose what kind of microscope you want. Uh, it's not absolutely necessary as we do give you suggested websites where you can view the samples online. But if you have it in your budget to purchase a microscope, here's some specs for you to look for. Here's how to use one. Here's the experiments that do use a microscope in this program and some options if you want to look for some other samples to go along with it. Obviously, there won't be this microscope information in each of the logic stage programs, but just in case you want that. And then the sequence of study. So you'd be able to look at a glance over two pages what you'll be studying for the year and materials listed by week. Again, you'll be able to look at at a glance, everything you'll need. We do offer experiment kits, which have the more difficult to find supplies. So things like your slides and your cover slips will be in that, but things like banana slices won't be in the kit. So the experiment kit can help you gather some of the supplies that you need that you won't necessarily have in your medicine chest like alcohol or in your kitchen like bread. So that's all your supplies listed so you can see them all at once. And then we've gotten to the actual units. So after your introduction, you'll have each of the units broken up and we'll take a look at those in part two of our tour.